Hello everyone, so in this video we are going to do video in paint editing using Vase in Comfy UI. This is a part 2 following up of the Vase video editing framework for 1.2.1. We're going to check out another technique for video editing today. Previously we talked about referencing videos in our first video about VAs, like animating images of Einstein, or generating animations using the 1.2.1 VAs model. We also covered examples like young couples walking on the beach. In this video, we'll focus mainly on video in painting. You've probably seen the VA page with examples like the riding horse and the kitten riding a bike. We'll dive into how to do those kinds of motions in this video, along with creating a smooth workflow in Comfy UI using the One Videos wrapper. I've experimented with fast motion scenes too, like ninja jumping onto someone and stabbing with a knife. I transform that into a ninja leaping onto a guy or even standing in front of a door. Slow motion shots with a black suit ninja? Sure, but honestly, slow motion stuff feels a bit boring to me. I'm more into pushing myself and the AI to try faster paced action. Could we animate something like the riding horse in fast motion? For this demo, I picked a stock video similar to what's on the Vase official page. I'll use another character, mask the character, and turn it into an elf holding a blade riding a horse. Of course, we'll also have a princess riding a horse and the horse itself walking. Let's dive in and see how this works. How does the VA's official page do it? I built this workflow last weekend and played around with it. Here's another fast motion clip I worked with before experimenting with Control Net. Fast motion scenes are tricky, especially when there are objects moving quickly in front of the characters. You could try line art control net or DW pose to help, but this time I'm using ink painting. I tested it with a different demo where I replaced the soldiers in the video with a ninja. Masking these regions was tough since the character moved super fast. Some frames were too blurry for the AI to handle well. It's challenging compared to steady shots where the character stands still. Those are easier to work with since you get a clear view of the in painting region, but I wanted to push myself and the AI with faster action scenes. This time I'll use a different image for the video in painting. I'm using an image I generated earlier in Flux. Imagine we'll have a green armored future warrior fighting here. The next steps involve a step-by-step -step process, kind of like building a waterfall. I usually design workflows with inputs at the top, things like video settings, width, height, etc. For 1, 2.1, we'll set those dimensions correctly. After that, we'll move on to text prompts. Text prompts should briefly describe what happens in the action and what appears in the in-painting area. For example, futuristic female fighter in a combat scene. To improve this, I'm using Olima with a vision language model to convert visual descriptions into text. I connected one of the language models I have locally. Now, I can describe the character's outfit clearly, what she's wearing, how she looks, and what her outfit will resemble in the video. If you look closely at the VA's text prompts, they're usually simple. You need at least one or two sentences to describe the character. For instance, in Naruto, they might just mention the teenager's hair color, clothing, etc. That's often enough. I've tried this approach too, and it works well. Once we're done with the text prompts for actions and camera styles, the next step is the reference image. I've tried multiple reference images before, not just for videos, but also for multiple in-painting areas. It's possible to reference multiple images, but it gets complicated and consumes a lot of VRM. It's also harder to explain in tutorials. So, I kept it simple. Many people can at least try the one mask in painting method shown in the VA demo, like the anime character riding a horse or the cat riding a bike. We'll animate one region in the video and use a reference character, in this case the green armored female warrior I mentioned earlier. This approach works smoothly on a local machine. If you're in painting multiple regions, yes you can do that too. But most consumer PCs might struggle with the hardware and VRAM requirements. Moving on, we'll connect a Llama since it uses vision language models. The most common way is using Llama 3.2, it's easy to install and I have an installation guide of Alama and Open Web UI long ago, I will link it in the video description below. Alama allows you to run language models and now supports vision language models. 
we can generate text descriptions from images which we'll use for text prompts. For example, I described an elf in a video with her outfit and what she's holding. Next, we'll explore the magic of video in painting using SAM2, Segment Anything Model 2, for segmentation. In the point editor, you'll see my previous examples. When you click run, it loads the first frames of the input video. We can track objects by placing green dots on them. The segmentation tool masks the entire region across the video's length. This way, we can automatically mask each frame, pinpointing exactly what we want to mask. For now, we'll place the green dots in the middle and adjust later. Other areas will grow the mask, displaying it for us and sending the data to the next groups for further processing. First, disable the sampling steps group and the display group. We'll use the first four groups, prompt, reference image, and segmentation. You can also disable the model loader since it's for the next step. Load the workflow and we'll receive each video frame. First, locate the green dots on the objects or characters in the first frame. For example, we'll stack the green dots on the soldiers in this video. If you want more precision, you can add red dots as negative regions telling the AI not to mask certain areas. Green dots are usually enough to identify the regions you want to mask. Press shift and click to add more green dots. For demonstration purposes, I added eight dots, but typically three per character are sufficient. Run the workflow again and you'll see the correct masking area. However, there's still a gunsling or strap that hasn't been masked. I'll place a green dot farther out to mask this area and hope for better results. Now we have near perfect masking. Sam 2 didn't catch the strap, but it's fine for now. Expand the mask slightly, maybe 30 pixels. Keep the blur radius at 1 for sharp masking, which is ideal for video editing. Next, we'll use the model loader, sampler 1, sampler 2, and display the output at the end. Sampler 1 handles ink painting, referencing the first embed image. I connected the futuristic female warrior image to the VACE encoder. Sampler 1 runs inference. Unless you want higher quality, you don't need to configure much. You can tweak the CFG number, steps, and seed numbers to experiment with different styles. Since this is in painting, you can change the seed numbers for different results. If you want to refine the video, Keep the seed numbers consistent for the sampler tool that follows a sampler one. For realistic footage, you might not need the sampler tool with Control Laura since the quality is already good. For real footage like mine, I avoid using the sampler tool with Control Laura because it doesn't need refinement. Let it run and compare sampler one and sampler two results. After running, check the dimensions again, width, height, and video length. Run it and you'll see the generated result. Here's the comparison demo. The masking area is pretty accurate this time. Next is the Tile LoRa. I mentioned Tile LoRa in previous videos, and it's working well this time too. The Tile LoRa sharpens the image frames and enhances colors. So far, the generation is smooth. If you want better quality, upscale the output video or Tile LoRa output. This way, you can render 4K quality videos for your final production. That's one downside of in-painting. It lacks a control net to guide character movements. It relies solely on the source footage and mask regions. Whatever you input or reference becomes the output. While it's not simple, this is the most common way to do video in-painting, similar to the demos. Even in the official demos, details from cartoon or 3D characters aren't fully followed. For example, the sleeve of a traditional Chinese outfit isn't present in the generated result. Sometimes, simpler outfits like a kitten's bike riding outfit can follow closely, but detailed outfits like traditional Chinese attire or jackets with patterns on the sleeves won't match perfectly. The same applies to my videos. Let's zoom out. In the first frame, you can see the clearest motion. This time, the futuristic armor suit of the female warrior follows well. Think Iron Man but in green. The hairstyle and ponytail also follow nicely. Of course, this is fast motion so it's hard to get a clear picture of the character. But overall, it works. If we play a follow-up shot, it matches our expectations.
Now let's try a slower motion example. You'll see how video in painting works in slower scenes. I chose a horse riding video similar to the demo on the VA page. Instead of the ninja or elf outfits, I'll use a challenging image from Flux, a character with horns on the head, green armor, and a big sword. We'll in paint this. Ideally, we'll get something similar to the video. Before starting, delete the point editor by highlighting the green dots and right-clicking to remove them. Place them in the middle of the image for relocation if needed. Disable the sampling steps first. Set up the first frames for segmentation. Different videos require different placements for the green dots. For this character, I'll be more precise on the head, body, and lower body parts. Hopefully, we'll cover the entire character this way. Wait for Sam 2 to load and the mask to grow. We've got the masking result. There's too much overlap since we expanded the mask too much. Adjust the numbers and positions of the pointers as needed. Based on my experience, this is how you mask objects in video. I got almost perfect masking, including the character's legs. Next, let's check the text prompts for the character. Include the flux image here. Try it out with our character. Enter the file path and click generate. Preview the result. Perfect removal of the background. Now let's see how the text prompts look. Ensure everything matches your description. Here we have an elf with green armor complete with all the settings. Perfect settings for this scene. Now we'll create our text prompts. In this video, we don't need overly detailed custom text prompts. Just describe the elf riding a horse in dynamic camera scenes. Let the language model create the text prompt description for the character. One more thing. Ensure the final output text prompt is correct. Run it again for a preview. Everything looks good. Enable the WAN 2.1 group and click generate again. Let the sampling steps run. After a few generations, here's my result. Even up close, the character's style looks good. Unfortunately, the sword isn't visible in the video. Maybe it's a masking region issue. I tried other videos with different images, but accessories like swords don't appear either. So far, the character's outfit replicates well in the generated video. Closer to the camera, you can see more details. Sometimes even angle changes show patterns from the reference image. For example, this short video duration still shows armor details. I tried an iconic character costume, Superman, but the face looks like John Cena. Still, we replicated the costume well. Lastly, I tried an animated character, Naruto. So far, it's pretty cool using this video in painting technique. We can replicate the reference style in the generated video. We can do this using WAN 2.1 with Vase. That's what I've discovered so far with WAN Vase, and I'll keep exploring different combinations. This is based on WAN Video's wrapper, which you need to install. I explained installation in previous videos, so check them out. Some people ask about missing nodes in Comfy UI. Install the one video wrapper to use this custom node. That's it for this video. See you guys next time. Have a great day.